welcome back students we were seeing the topic human health and disease so let's continue our topic with aids or hiv now the major symptoms observed in aids or you can say the hiv patient is he uh, the mainly the loss of more than 10% of the body weight is seen that means what happens within few weeks of initial infection some of the infected persons also show like uh, the symptoms like sore throat low grade fever headache malaise skin rashes or you can say chronic diarrhea and also prolonged fever is observed and the symptoms can be like they would be cough for more than a month generalized itchy skin rash painful group of blisters all over the body then generalized swollen glim flans and white curd like patch on the tongue or you can say on the throat is observed now clinically it uh, you can say the asymptomatic stage of aids is of latency that means patient may be asymptomatic or you can say symptomless or patient may have mild constitutional symptoms okay that that means they have swollen uh, lymph no uh, this uh, lymph nodes and all so these are some of the symptoms these are some of the minor symptoms observed and these are the major symptoms observed in aids next comes the diagnosis in diagnosis mainly the specific serological test are commonly used for the diagnosis of aids now when the person is said to be hiv positive that means he will have two major signs and one minor sign plus the blood test would be positive and if the person is said to be you can say suffering from aids that means he will have two ma major signs and one ma minor sign plus aids specific opportunistic infections are observed and the blood test is positive now what the concentration of the virus as we have seen that hiv is a virus that is human immunodeficiency virus so what will happen the in uh, the concentration of virus in menstrual blood and the blood will be very high also in the vaginal fluids in semen or you can say in the pre ejaculate of uh, pre ejaculate fluid also the concentration of uh, this virus is high in bone marrow also it's there in the, uh, the concentration is not so much in the saliva whereas in sweat and tears and urine also the concentration of virus is not that much okay now how hiv cannot be transmitted hiv is not transmitted through coughing or sneezing not also through food and water sweat and in tears also this virus is not present next comes by sharing cups plates utensils with an infected persons or by hugging touching or kissing an infected person the hiv is not transmitted again by sharing of common clothes or you can say shaking hands with an infected person by sharing toilets and bathroom with an infected person by will, by living with an infected person and by mosquitoes fleas and other insects also the hiv is not transmitted but mainly it is transmitted by blood products tissues organs or more than 90% this blood transaction is there and transfusion is there due to that the hiv can be transmitted again during the sexual intercourse also and 0.1 to 1% however frequency of causing high rate of infection that means during sexual intercourse the percentage is high again due to idu also that means through inter uterine devices also these and this hiv can be transmitted again there are 30% chances of hiv transmission from parent to child that means from hiv positive mother to the child 30% chances are there for the hiv to get transmitted so students in this session we have seen some of the symptoms observed during the uh, person suffering from aids or you can say hiv positive patient thank you